The Disaster Artist is actually directed by James Franco himself and he plays the lead role of Tommy Wiseau and his brother Dave Franco plays Tommy Wiseau's partner in crime as they get together to make the world's shittiest movie that anybody has ever seen. So most people in the film community are already aware of the, the source material that James Franco and company are, you know, doing a biograph of and making a movie out of. It's called The Room Made by an Actual Person Named Tommy Wiseau, and it's the worst movie ever put to film. Here you go. That's me. How much is it? It'll be $18. Here you go. Keep the change. Hi, doggy. You're my favorite customer. Thanks a lot. Bye. I got the results of the test back. I definitely have breast cancer. Are you okay, Danny? I'm okay. Are you okay? I'm okay. You know better, Danny. You almost got killed. I'm sorry. It won't happen again, I promise. You are lying. I never hit you. You are tearing me apart, Lisa! I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. It's so bad that it's actually kind of the greatest thing ever. <laughs> this film was spectacular and it was a real treat for me as it probably will be for a lot of other film lovers and people who, who really like The Room and, you know, get to see this kind of biographical making of The Room in this movie. And, you know, it's also just good for people who, who just love filmmaking and have a passion for filmmaking because this film, you know, has a special place for those people who are aspiring to be filmmakers and trying to make it big out there. James Franco in this movie, I mean, what, what's there to say? This dude's awesome. I've always really liked James Franco and he just totally knocks it out of the park in this film. This must have been just an insanely odd role to, to even attempt to portray. I mean, for those people who already know of Tommy Wiseau, I mean, that dude is just such a weird character. He's kind of inconsistent at times and his accent isn't, isn't even like describable. So it's, it's a very difficult task to, to, try and, uh, to try and portray the kind of character that James Franco was, was, was attempting to do. And I gotta give the dude huge props for that. He really sold this role from the beginning to end and it was, he was great. Kudos to James Franco for sure. And also huge kudos to James Franco's brother Dave Franco as well. I thought he was pretty damn good in his role as well. It's probably, you know, not the easiest thing ever to, to act in a movie with your brother like that all the time. You know, it, that's gotta be kind of a awkward, weird experience, but they both, they both did great. They were both great in this film. And you know, I, I really wouldn't be surprised if you saw James Franco get an Oscar nomination for this movie. I mean, he was really that out there in this film. He did a great job for, for what he did. This is an A24 film, which I thought was kind of weird because, you know, it's got a pretty big cast. It's James Franco, Dave Franco, Seth Rogen's in this movie too. And a lot of other kind of well-known people are also in this film. And you wouldn't really think this would be an A24 film, but you know, when you're watching it, you definitely, it's got that A24 independent drama vibe. You know, this definitely this is a comedy. It's, it's more of a drama and a comedy. There's definitely comedy in this, but the comedy, you know, it isn't, it isn't what you're, what you're used to seeing from James Franco, Seth Rogen, and all these people. The comedy in this film is a little more implied. It's a little more subtle, uh, but it works very well. And, you know, again, with a movie that, you know, kind of goes in between drama and comedy, it worked very well. This film has a very consistent theme that you kind of see throughout about, you know, following your dreams and aspiring to be something even if the odds seem to be against you. And, you know, of course, you know, again, we get this theme a lot with certain uh, Oscar nominated films. But again, like kind of like the same with La La Land, this film kind of portrays that theme in a way that I just haven't really seen. It's a very weird way that this film teaches you that, yes, you should aspire for your dreams because with this film, it's super easy to say, no, you should not follow your dreams. You should, you totally shouldn't do that. Especially if you don't have the talent to do it, then you most definitely shouldn't do it. But somehow this film manages to explore a life of somebody who wa really wanted it, who really wanted it with all their might, but just didn't have the talent, but was still able to make something that millions of people, even across the world, enjoy and watch regularly. I'm very impressed with this film. This is probably going to be my top five or top 10 films of the year. So I'm going to give The Disaster Artist an A. I obviously highly recommend this movie and everybody should go see it. And also, if you haven't seen The Room, you should probably see that movie too. But, you know, just be cautious. It's really bad. You're just a chicken. Chip, 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 chip. Uh, chill out, chill out. 
but it's so bad that it's just it's so entertaining that like you just it's so bad that you really can't take your eyes away from the screen but it's it'll it'll be a really unique experience for you trust me just just go watch the room and also go watch the disaster artist uh thank you so much for clicking on this video and hearing what i had to say about the disaster artist if you liked it please give it a thumbs up and share it amongst your friends and don't forget to subscribe to the misfit pawn channel to be updated on more film related content